Hey gang, Diana here today with uh, my favorite art supplies video and today's subject is bookbinding, one of my favorite topics and I get a lot of questions about what do you need? This is my binding kit and I have to tell you I'm not crazy about it. This is, I believe it's an art bin, but I used to use a regular artist toolbox and I highly recommend that. Let me go through the kit and the tools. So let's start with the thread, the needles and the thread. This is waxed linen, three or four ply, I can't remember, but I'll link you up below. Uh, it's already been waxed. And I've noticed that binders these days are getting away from the waxed linen and using the unwaxed linen. They like it better because it has, it's got less wax on it. Um, I don't really have a preference. I don't care really that much. Just as long as it's good, strong waxed linen is fine. And this is beeswax that you can wax your linen with just by drawing it across the block you could also use a candle. A note on thread, if you're making a little tiny book like something like this, you could use embroidery floss for this and just wax it with a candle or the beeswax. I really recommend not using dental floss. Don't use dental floss. I see people using it and it it's too stretchy. It won't last but um, just grab some, grab some embroidery floss and a candle, and you're set. These are uh, tapestry needles, 22 or number 20 tapestry needles. They have a blunt tip, so they won't pierce your paper, and they have a nice sized um, hole, so it's easy to thread. I'm going to link up uh, binding needles below, but you can go to your local craft or sewing store and get the tapestry needles. So let's get into some of these tools. This is a binder's awl and um, it's a little different from a sewing awl. For one thing it's a little bit larger and I like this style because I can nest it in my hand and turn it easily. I have a bone folder. It's a great tool to have. If you don't have one, you can use the side of your scissors. We use this to crease the pages and to burnish things down, but you can use scissors, especially if you're not sure. Okay, here's a uh, craft knife or X-Acto knife, and I just got some new information on this. Now, this used to be called a number 11, so if you have a number 11 craft knife, it's now called a number 1 craft knife. The blades are still number 11 and Z. And the Z means they're zirconium coated and have a longer life. I just talked to Dick Lick about this. I haven't checked my craft store but um, for regular blades. But Dick Blick didn't even have any regular blades, so I'm assuming they're getting rid of them altogether. Okay, but it's a great tool. I, I uh, highly recommend a good craft knife. And uh, with that, uh, I recommend a, a cutting mat to protect your services and, uh, surfaces and blade too. A pencil and eraser uh, for binding binder clips. These are very handy to have to hold your pages steady while you are stitching. This might seem random, but either a nice thick catalog or a phone book is going to be really handy to have as a, a cradle. And I have had a cradle. I liked using it, but I just use my my catalog now. Okay, along with your rulers, um, I use a self-healing mat, and it's a great surface to use your X-Acto knife on. The rulers are, this little T-square ruler is, is really great, but it's a 12-inch ruler, it's plastic, it's pretty inexpensive. I, again, I'll link this stuff up for you. 
Tim Holtz ruler is a very good one as well. It has a centering, it has a zero here to center it each way. It's 12 inches and the most important thing, if you're using a knife, you need a metal edge. And Tim's ruler does have that nice metal edge. The plastic T-square does not, so it's only good for drawing lines. Um, outside of that, I use a metal ruler. Uh, this is my tiny one. I use like a 12-inch one usually. Let's talk adhesives. Now, this is a huge topic, but I'm just going to give you a few little heads up here. And the first one is that if you're making a small book, you can use a, a oohoo glue stick and I am specifically telling you oohoo because this is the best one available and if you really you make a sun on the back of your paper you're going to glue that maybe you're going to make a book board for your books work that paste up because it's basically what this is and put it on a magazine or something that you don't worry about and take that paste right off the edge and make sure you got everything. Okay, so that's my first tip. It's a small book. It's a casual binding. It's for you. Use Uhu. All right, next up we have PVA and the other glue is methyl cellulose. Now this is the Linico brand cell methyl cellulose and it's about I don't know how much more expensive it is than the one I use, which is the Elmer's brand of art paste. It's the same stuff. So what I do is, this is a strong glue, the PVA. Polyvinyl acetate is what this is. And um, it dries relatively quickly, so you don't get a lot of wiggle room. So if you're, again, if you're, if you've pasted this up, you want to be able to get this piece of bookboard on there and then fold your edges around it. So you want to have some wiggle room, which is where the um, art paste or methyl cellulose comes in. This is a powdered glue that you have to uh, mix with water. And then I mix the two of them together and just keep it in a container. If you use distilled water, this stuff will last for a really long time. It won't mold or anything. So, and I, I use a, um, a, probably like two methyl cellulose to one PVA or something like that. The methyl cellulose stays open and wet for a while, but it's a very weak um, glue. Let's talk covers here. This cover is binding board. And that's what I used for this book. It's a fabric cover, and there's a there's it's a paper fabric, which is um, another subject. This is the board, the book board, and this is also available anywhere. It's a little difficult to cut, but let me give you another sample. Now this this book I bought in Italy, and it has a much thinner cover. Let's hear bunk. Okay, you can definitely hear it. Uh, and the, this cover is the one I prefer, but this is really, I love this cover because this book is turning into something kind of magical for me here. So it, you can use cardboard, you could stack a couple pieces of cardboard together. Um, heavyweight cardstock, just stack a couple pieces together. I've used cigar boxes, lids to make books, fruit boxes from the grocery store. You can use a lot of things. You can work things around a lot. Um, in fact, I have made books with kids and used big tacks instead. Well, not kids, but teenagers. I don't think I'd use tacks with little kids, but you can use tacks. Uh, you can really cut down on the amount you of stuff you buy or you can get uh, some other tools. I use this all, all the time. So anyway, that is it. That's what you need to bookbind. And if you have any questions, just put them down below in the comments. I love hearing from you guys and you, you all know that. And you can always email me, pop around to my blog. I'll have more photos and 
pictures and links up on my blog. And don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up while you're down below. I will see you soon. Thanks for coming by today.